so let's say that we have to do this kind of shot, Harry Potter broom flying shot, and we have to do the simulation on her or whatever. This time we'll be doing the rope, the coat um, he's wearing, and let's see how we got here. So we have um, this character right there. You can see it. This is really great from the origin and the height that it's showing right now. Okay. So we have one frame close to the beginning of the animation. We have a little pre-roll there and then it starts flying. Okay, first thing first, I can see that this first um, frame is not good because it's going through the coat, the, the room. So I just did this kind of transform right here. So you can see right there, if I just select this one with this transform, it's going from these numbers zero so here there is no transformation that's exactly the same as the animation but we have a pre-roll now for our room so let's try and do the simulation of this you will see it doesn't look pretty well so we have our code right here time shift and remesh and then point deform it to have a triangulated version of it just moving on we created a cloth also an attachment to the one that's moving, we have just these um, points in a group, so they are attached. And let's see what happens with the simulation. I will just reset the one that I have. Oh, I don't have any, so that's perfect. So um, um, I'm colliding that with the pre rolled room and the body. Also, I did a subdivision of the original one, another point of form to get the original one subdivided and I just merge them so we can see what's happening here. And you can see this is going pretty well until one point. It's the frame when it starts. As you can see, it starts to break everything and everything going slowly and everything breaks. I guess that some of you had these problems in the past. So you should, or you could then um, play with some things here in the solver on the cloth uh, playing with the time scale, with the soup steps especially, and you can just pump up this number a lot. It's going to make it a lot slower, and the simulation is not um, that fast anymore. But maybe that would work. But um, the discussion that I'm trying to open here is what should we do? You know, we should play with the numbers like physicists, or we should play with the character like artists, like, you know, in cinema. So let's think. How do they shoot that in real life? Well, well they do that. <laughs> really, they just put a guy in a stick uh, with a gimbal, some huge fan in front of him uh, to mimic the wind going because they are going really, really fast. And that's pretty much it. So we're doing movies, really. We're not doing physics. And that's the thing. Sometimes the FX artists, especially they think in, in physics and, and in matrices and forces and gravity and all that stuff. But mm, we don't really care about that. We care about things that look cool, uh, that the director will like, um, you know, that they, in a movie will look great. So it's kind of like real physics uh, versus uh, cinema physics. So let's try to do it like uh, cinema. Let's try to do it like a shooting. Okay, I've got this just right here, and it's the same animation, everything is the same. And I will do a couple of examples with this node, which is called Extra Transform. So I have a time shift on the origin, so this guy is on the origin. And if I do a stack transform, you will see that now I have a point in the origin that doesn't move. I have the output attributes as a transform matrix. So as you can see, I have an attribute here, 16 float matrix called transform. So I can copy that to my object and just let's see what happens. Just don't mind these ones for now. If I do a transform by attribute, I use the transform attribute and I invert the transformation. This is what you have. Okay, so that's a lot like shooting uh, an actor with a room. That's really great. So if I just add another one like that and I unclick the transform attribute, you will see that I have exactly the same shot that I had. So what happens in between is the thing that can play a lot. I can play a lot here and at the end of the day, just giving it back its wall space transformation. 
Okay, so here I have exactly the same setup with the time shift and the remesh and the animation for the broom, for the pre-roll and everything set up. Same thing with the last point deform, also a subdivision, and we have this right now. Um, and at the end of everything, I just you can see that if you want, just right here. Let's see it. You will see that I have this simulation right here. This is great. I added a little bit of width, uh, negative y direction, because we are in this kind of diagonal pose, and uh, minus one, because it's going away the z axis. So this will look pretty great. This is just like having the actor in the broomstick. And at the, at the end of everything, let's just copy it again. This transform, you can see this transform attribute from here to here to all the points and do the transform without the invert transformation. So that's what I got. I've got um, the character floating around with a really nice and um, safe simulation. You can play, as you can imagine, you can play a lot with this simulation here because it's static. It's really easy to change wind direction, to change friction, to change a lot of parameters in the cloth and even do some mixing and shock sculpting, whatever you want. And once you have something that works, you can just return the wall space transformation. And you can see right here that it looks pretty nice already. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. Pretty nice. And we have another way, which I think it's even nicer. So instead of grabbing this and creating a uh, just grab that oh. and creating this exact transformation um, output this transform attribute I will just use the standard instant attribute this will give me just one point just remember it's just one point with an orient attribute a p attribute and a p not attribute okay if I just look it through the camera you will see that oh come on that this point is moving in space as my character so this is the wall space put it in just one point what I did here is just time shift on the first frame of the pre-roll, frame in the origin, and a blend shape right here, and we will change that in a bit. And I created another one. Right now, this is going to be exactly the same. Everything is moving. Oh, my point is moving. That's great. And I will grab the P attribute, the position of this point, and I will copy it to all the points here as a new attribute called wall position. Okay, so now I can pack this Again, so now I have just one point with this attribute, and I can transform by this attribute, wall position. And what we got is something like that. This is the character in the origin, but the rotation, it, it's still there because I'm just, um, I'm just neg negating, really neutralizing the P, so the translation, not the rotation. And what about this blend shape? Well, we can play a little bit with this blade shape, maybe I can show it to you. If I can just put 0.8 here, you will see that now my character is doing 20% of this movement. So this would be like the whole movement we have. And this 0.9 is just like 10% of the movement. So we can do simulations here and then come back because we are exporting really this P after the blend shape and then come back as we did just with the same attribute by transform without the invert transformation now. Okay, so let's put it at one and let's see that this is exactly the same, the same transform from the room because it's local space, so it will do the pre-roll perfectly fine. It's exactly the same node and the same things around here. And I've got just the result of this one. In this one, we have just a uh, wind going in the negative one direction and I have a ramp there as you can see there's a ramp from 0 to 10 at the beginning to start making the uh, rope float against the wind so now you can see this one this will be working pretty nicely also but maybe just maybe just because you have done it you can see the Z direction right you can see how he's um, moving you know it's going in this z direction always the coat flying against the z and it's moving so we have rotations but we don't have like the wind moving so we can fix that pretty easily 
with a little bit of math, not that much math really. So I have an example here, let's say we have a grid and we have a sphere and you can see that the sphere is moving one way and the other way, but okay. So what I did is I just grabbed one point from this, um, from this grid and another point from the ball, from the sphere, and you will see that the point is moving. So the only thing that I'm doing, which is exactly the same the Invert Transform is doing, is just subtracting those two. So let's just grab this and create a force, which will be the P of this point minus the P of this sphere point. And you can see right now I have my, I am, I am showing the force attribute you can see right now that I have a really nice direction vector and it's not only direction, it's also magnitude because you can see that it's going farther away so it's going to have a much higher value. So I can grab this attribute right here called force and I will put it on my value solver just like that. So this is a point attribute coming from this node called attribute random one. We want the first point here we just have one point, but we want the first point to count. And we want the attribute called force in this first point. And here we, we want the first float number of the vector, the tree float number vector that we have called force.x or for force uh, red or whatever you want to call it. So same thing here with the one, with the y or the green, and second with the z or the blue. So right now, as you can see, we have these numbers and they make sense. So if I start scrubbing, you can see this is minus one, one point three in X. So yeah, we have this, this is almost at zero. So this is minus one point something. And at the end, this is 5.5. So this will be like a wind of 5.5 in this direction times two, because we are, we have here the multiplier of the speed. So you can see right here when I just simulate that cloth and showing that you will see how it changes and you can see that this has more win and this has even more win because this is has a magnitude of five because it's really far away so you can animate an object and use it to create a like a drive and fun um, in a shooting stage so we can do really um, nice things with this fan and i did the same here with the uh, with the broomstick so i just grabbed the, the broom and I have the room just moving along. And you know, the direction of the wind should be like this vector. This is already a vector for our direction of the wind because this is pointing to where we are accelerating. So what I've done is I just grab one point in the teeth, one point at the bottom, just exactly the same. I just subtract them. And then I came here and I put, I can put exactly the same thing. So let's just grab this right here and let's just go to the first frame just in case and I can grab this but this is called absolute wrangle 2 so this will be absolute wrangle 2 and this is y for green not y sorry this is one <laughs> one for y and this is two for z or blue because it's a vector a three float number and you will see this will change again in this direction in the direction that my room is going so I have that already seen here and you will see that it works pretty well. And that's a little bit of the idea here. So we did some math, we did something technically, a little bit technical, yeah, but just to solve artistic problems, which are the technical problem that we had at the beginning. It's also an artistic problem because it doesn't look good. You know, it breaks the simulation and to make it look good, you, you could spend a lot of hours of simulation uh, trying to blend with this, um, trying to manage this high speed um, simulation and all of that. So my advice here is just to try to be more artistic. You know, character effects artists shouldn't be a technical person, really. It should be like a mixture of both. In, well, even, even effects artists should be like a more um, artistic driven sometimes you know and not talk that much about forces and about um, science stuff uh, but what really looks good and what it makes the shot look cool and volume silhouettes that's where we work you know and if you're a character effects artist and you come from like a 
an artistic background, but you should learn a little bit of math, a little bit of, of programming, a little bit of the technical stuff. And if you come with a, with a technical background, you should stop learning technical things and start learning how to draw, how to work with silhouettes and volumes, because at the end of the day is what we need. Uh, we don't need perfect mathematic things. Nobody cares about the numbers. Nobody cares about the physics. We just care about some things looking cool and looking great. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.